Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, we're going to be painting a misty morning countryside scene. I actually took this photo, um, caught this scene and um, colorized a little bit, brightened up a little bit, but I'm really looking forward to painting this with you tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in a chat tonight, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm starting with a canvas that's got a little bit of um, light coat of Indian yellow hue on it. Um, any kind of light yellow will do. You just want a little tone underneath. Um, this is a Frederick's mixed media canvas board, a nine by 12 inch size. <clears throat> and I haven't prepped it any at all, except for just to paint it with that light coat. And I used a paper towel and you can see the little bits of paper towel that came off in it. Not gonna hurt anything. <laughs> what was the color again? I missed it. Indian yellow hue with uh, just a spray of water. And I used paper towel and just wiped it on. So it's very thinned out. Um, so you could use white with a little bit of yellow or just a, really any yellow, like I said, just a light yellow tone underneath. Okay. So what you're gonna want. As far as our paint color, our paint brushes today, we're going to be um, needing kind of a large flat of some sort to do the large sky. We've got kind of a large expanse here that will have the sun in there. Um, and so I'm gonna be using a Deerfoot stippler probably for the foliage and the sun portion. So this is a three eighths inch and a five eighths inch size. Um, or any kind of stiff bristled brush. You could probably use a, um, a hog bristle brush instead if you don't have one of those specialty brushes that I mentioned. And then for the posts, um, the fence post and some of the tree branches, you're going to want like a round brush uh, and kind of, I've got a couple different sizes. I've got a liner and um, I've got a filbert as well for some of the areas to block in. All right. Um, I might even use a fan brush. So we'll just, we'll stay tuned and see which ones <laughs> she uses. I don't know. I haven't painted this ahead of time. So your guess is good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out together <laughs> what happens. <laughs> All right, let's go over colors. <laughs> I've got burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt uh, no, quinacridone magenta. Um, pyrrole orange, or if you don't have this color, it is kind of new to my palette. You can use uh, cadmium orange or cadmium red light instead. Um, this one is the yellow Indian yellow hue that I used for the background. Um, cadmium yellow light. Thalo turquoise. Um, you could use thalo blue or thalo green instead if you don't have it. Thalo turquoise, um, ultramarine blue, and unbleached titanium, titanium white, some zinc white in case we need to do kind of some of that fog. This is just a transparent white. And then some gloss glazing liquid or some matte medium or something else that's got a little extender and a little transparency so we can do some glazing if we need to. All right, phew. Um, I think I need to have those exclamations like that on Batman, like the bam, pow, pow. Right. So when you use a new brush, like pow. number two round. Yeah, I think pow. so. Pow. Okay. I like it. <laughs> I like that. You just want a new toy is what you're saying. What? <laughs> no comprendo. That just reminds me of our grandson, Liam, Marco, Marco's, hey, muchacho. And he always says, I not chacho, you chacho. <laughs> He's four, sorry. I'm Liam. That just reminds yeah, I'm Liam. I not chacho, you're chacho. Okay, sorry. I'm diverting. Sorry okay. about that. Um, I'm looking at my reference photo, so I cropped it a little bit, obviously. I wanted that. I caught the sun. I mean, it was such a beautiful, beautiful scene. I couldn't believe I, I like literally stopped, took this picture out the, out the car window. I pulled off to the side of the road and took it out. Unfortunately, it was a country road. Nobody was coming, so it was okay. Did it take it you was home? Safe. Huh? Did it take you home? Country road. <laughs> yeah. All right. So halfway um, is kind of where my tree line is. 
I'm just going to kind of, it's a little bit lower on this side. So I'm just going to use some chalk to mark it. Um, and then um, the bottom portion is, it looks like it's almost on the quarter. It's, it's like not quite on the third. Um, it's a little lower than the third. So kind of just come down a little bit. So this section should be like one, two, and then this one should be like one and a half of this one, if that makes sense. So somewhere in here, it doesn't really matter. Honestly, I don't know why I'm taking so long to do this. It's a straight line across the canvas. Let's just do that and go. Done. All right. So there we go. So I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of reference. I'm going to paint this whole sky section in the solid and then put my um, trees in after that. But it was just like perfectly silhouetted. Um, the sun coming behind the trees so they're dark. And the grass is all lit up here in the foreground. I do want to leave myself enough room to do the fence post um, shadow, which I love. This one of my favorite parts about this. So I might bring that part up just a little bit more than I have it. Okay, so for the sky, um, I'm not going to put my sun in quite yet. Usually I'll like try to put the sun in and paint around it. But I think I'm just going to do the yellow uh, or the um, pink part of the sky and then I will try to add my yellow into it um, on top of this or the sun part on top with my blender or deer foot or something all right we'll see I don't know sometimes I do it different ways there's all kinds of different ways of approaching a uh, sky like this but I think this will we'll we'll see um, all right, I'm going to get some unbleached titanium. That'll kind of warm up that pink because right now it's like really pink and I added white to it. So this is magenta and white, a little bit of unbleached titanium and the unbleached titanium you can see has that kind of yellowish undertone. So it helps, yeah, like make it more of a coral yellow, which our background will also help with that. So, but I think that's going to be really nice right there. It just neutralizes it just slightly so that it's not so bright bubblegum pink. And if you want to try to go ahead, I might just go ahead and kind of leave just a little bit of that yellow sort of right up in there somewhere. I, I might be a little higher, actually. I don't know. Let's just paint this background in. And then as we get farther away from the sun... It gets a little bit slightly blue, kind of blue-gray. So I'm going to leave most of this <clears throat> yellowish pink color here that I've got, or light neutral pink, and touch just the tiniest little bit of blue, like teeny tiny. In here maybe a little bit more than that but not much more there we go and do that up in here <coughs> Let me get a little bit whoop, a little bit of the white that was ink white didn't mean to do that just using what's left on my brush with a tiny bit of white and ultramarine blue there we go Do this quickly. You can mix that color up ahead of time if you want to, but I'm just doing it quickly so that it it's barely noticeable actually. So I might go just a little bit more obvious with it. A little bit more blue there. Okay. Okay, that looks good. So just barely noticeable. <clears throat> and then down here, Along the tree line, I'm going to get some of my yellow, mix that with my pink. It's really going to be kind of the same color as the background almost, but I'll be putting trees in here. So just want to blend that out a little bit so that it, there's not a hard line there to 
blend into later. Okay, there we go. I'll get some water on my brush and just wipe out as much as I can on my paper towel. And then just kind of leave it on the side there. All right, so that's still kind of drying. It's not quite dry yet, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do my foliage here. Um, while it's wet, it'll kind of just blend into it and create a whole new thing. So I'm going to get the ultramarine blue and some of my magenta and some burnt sienna. It's kind of a lightish color, so I'm going to get some of that unbleached titanium. And depending on how, you know, what tone we want it to make, I might add a little bit of the turquoise to it. If I want it a little bit more greenish. It's kind of um, an interesting color. Yeah, a nice gray, very light. I generally like to use the sky color when I'm doing something like this that is um, being influenced by the sky, you know, mountains or, um, in this case, foliage that is um, in silhouette because the sky color really does affect it a lot. So that's really nice. So just kind of smoky gray. And I'm going to start pretty light, and then I'll go darker as I need to. But that's that's looking pretty good. All right. Just tapping in over that pink there. Look how pretty that is already. Now, I definitely need to go darker, so I'll get a little bit of the darker color. But I'm leaving that lighter color toward the bottom, so I kind of started there on purpose just to and get an idea if this is the color that I wanted. Just a, so it's the background color which had the um, magenta and unbleached titanium and white. And then I used, I mixed it into the area that had the blue in it. And then I added just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of turquoise and a little bit of burnt sienna and more magenta and more blue. So it's kind of these one, two, three, four, those colors and the white and the unbleached titanium. Okay, that's what I've got here. Again, don't get too caught up in the color itself. I'd more be um, concerned about the um, value of it. So I'm going to get a little bit more turquoise and do a little bit more turquoise over here. And I'm going to come up a little higher, too. I want it to be kind of up in here. Because, again, I'm going to kind of bring my foreground up a little bit. So I did not blend it right there very well. Blend that in a little bit better than I did. And then come back down. leaving myself enough room for my sky. I might have brought that up a little bit high, but it is kind of high right there. And I can get my little, leave a little bit of your sky color just so you can tap back over the edge there and soften it up if you need to. My tree's gonna go right in this area too, so. I'm getting some lighter color just to tap in toward the bottom. So I want it to go a little bit lighter as it comes down towards the bottom there. That looks good. And it's going to dry a little bit darker than what you when you first put it on. So you might test it a little bit, you know, um, maybe in the area behind your tree or something and see. I definitely think I brought it up a little too high right there. But I don't think I can get that. I'm not sure if I can get it off or not. Let's see. I don't want to wipe off all my pink. Now, if I mess with it, it'll just pull my pink off my sky area. Got 
just gonna bring it up a little bit up here to give it a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Okay, just tip tapping my with my brush so I'm stippling, getting nice textures there in my eye color. Okay, now when I checked it earlier, I was looking at my reference photo and we're, we're supposed to be in this general area here as far as values go. So if I hold that over, it's hard to do while it's wet, but I think I'm a little bit light. I'm not quite that dark. You see how you can see it through? It's kind of closer to this. So I can go a little bit darker with this. I'd rather go lighter at first and go darker. It's a lot easier to do that than to lighten it back up once it's on. So I'm going to get a little bit more magenta and turquoise and a little bit of the burnt sienna. And maybe a little bit of gloss glazing liquid, liquid so that it's not so thick. Okay, so that looks good. That's probably where I want to be up in that area. And I still want it to lighten as it goes down. So if your paint is getting sticky though, you know, if you get to this point and you're like, it's getting a little gummy or it's not wanting to lay color down. It's it mine is drying pretty quick in our studio here, so I've got lights on and things, but so you may need to leave yours for a little bit longer than I am before you do this next coat here that I'm doing. Um, because if your first layer is still wet um and trying to dry, it may lift on you and you may end up getting some areas of what happens, it kind of like creates a halo where there's dark color around it and then the lighter color won't stick or the color won't stick to that area because it's lifted off the canvas and sticking to your brush. Um, so just watch for that when you're doing these kind of multiple layer things. Same with the background with the sky. You know, I didn't really wait for it to dry. So if you're having issues and you're Finding like that area right there is not wanting to accept paint right now. I just tapped over it and it lifted off there. So I just need to leave that alone. Avoid that area. Let it dry completely before I try to put more paint down. Okay, but that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm liking that. And I think it's a little bit darker, probably closer to what we want to, where we want to be. Okay. Alright, I'm not going to do any of the foreground area um, yet. I'm going to wipe that brush out and try to dry it because it needs to be pretty dry to do the sky and make sure there's none of that other color in there. I may just have to use my smaller brush. We'll see. We'll use this and see if it works. Okay. So I'm going to get my white. Let's spray that all good. Keep this wet so that it doesn't dry out because I'm going to need some for this step. So, all right, going to get some white. Figure out where I want my sun to be. And put that color down pretty thick. And then as... I go out, I'm just going to kind of lighten up my pressure on it. Oh, that's nice. That worked really nicely. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of my Indian yellow hue and go over that outside area. Again, very, very, very light pressure because I don't want to lift off any of this white that I just did and go out from there. Okay, and then I'm going to get my yellow, or my a pink from my sky color, and go around that area again. Ooh, it picked up a little bit of that. About, be careful not to get that. That's what I just picked up a little bit of that. 
What? Oof. <laughs> Don't do what I just Don't did. Don't get that. Don't, Don't get it. That up. No. Okay, that worked really well. Really good. I like that technique. So paint your background first, then do the sun over the top with this really light dry brushing. And I like I like how it looks. I'm probably going to do it one more time just to give it a little bit more brightness. And I think um, after doing this, I'm noticing that I think I want a little bit more red in my sky too. So I may glaze that um, too. But I'm just going to clean that out and let it set. And this is dry enough. This is still a little bit damp, but I can I think I can work with it. Um, so let's think. Let's go ahead and use this one and do a little bit more of a more saturated pink. And I'm going to get some glaze. So I'm getting that original magenta color with the uh, unbleached titanium with it with my background color and I'm going to go in here with my transparent glaze. I've got a little bit of that glaze on my brush and I'm just going to brush that on really quickly and try not to go over my and this is this is um, this step would be unnecessary if I put my color on dark enough. So I got my color on originally a little bit light, and I'm going to just get that original color and push it back right here. See that? And I'm going to get a little bit of that darker color and just put it around. Okay. So putting it on a nice thin, thin coat quickly. I'm just going to go ahead and blend it in all down here. That's good. Okay, so it's got that kind of hazy feel. It's going over the top of my my um, tree line here. Thank you. That's the word. Already losing my words. Okay, that's much better. So it's a little closer to that kind of pinkish glow that I was going for. The original photo was very monochromatic. It was kind of yellowish gray. Um, so the yellow, the pink is added with a filter. Um, but I just wanted a little bit more color. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And go back in with this color here. And I think that's dry. I'll go ahead and get my white again. Same brush. Tap it in my center of my sun there. Then wipe out any extra. And just use that to kind of fluff out those edges, dry brush, stuff, soft, nice, nice, that's really good, I like that a lot, a little, little bit of yellow coming around that, so it definitely needs two coats, but wow, that looks good. I really like that technique. Okay, I have to remember that for next time because that was way easier than trying to paint around it in the first go, you know, and it looks really good. I like it. So definitely going to remember that for next time. <clears throat> I like when things work out. Especially when I'm painting live, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Makes it seem like I know what I'm doing. Okay. <clears throat> I don't care how long you've painted. I've been painting for th over 30 years. It doesn't matter. The paint's going to do what it wants to do. So <laughs> Sometimes you try to figure it out and 
It does not cooperate, but it seems to be going well today. Fingers crossed, so we'll see. Keep on, keep on happening. So far, so good. All right, I'm gonna spray this down. I'm going to scrape off my palette here because I'm not gonna need these colors anymore. And they're starting to dry, so. I might leave a little bit of that sky color if I can get away with it. I think it's still kind of usable. <clears throat> All right. I'm just going to use this to wipe my palette off. I'm using a glass palette. If you are interested, it's down in my um, description. All the stuff, the paint colors are listed down there, and some basic brushes that I use. I don't. I don't usually. Um, know exactly what brushes I'm going to use so I don't have them listed. I just have a kind of a basic list of brushes. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. But anyhow, down in the description, the palette is listed down there um, in my, uh, if you go to the Amazon shop, it will be in there. All right, so let me see here. So I want to smooth out this where it comes down. See, there's kind of a fog bank right here. And it's kind of a almost yellowish green color. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this larger brush here. And this is where the zinc white is gonna come in because it's gonna give me that foggy, it's that um, transparent white. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the Indian yellow hue, which is our background color. And the reason I used the yellow is just that it was kind of um, in a lot of the areas. There are some greens and yellows, and then especially down here. Um, so when I'm picking, you know, my colors that I want to use, um, and that's kind of just generally what I do. And then yellow I knew was going to look good underneath this magenta and other things. Um, wasn't going to clash or anything. So I'm just going to use this down here and kind of brush it up over my tree line. I don't want to go all the way up to it, but you see how it's really softening that area now. And I think there's enough blue in this that when I'm putting this yellow over it, it's slightly turning it green. So if it's not green enough for you, you can add a little turquoise to it or something, or even maybe a little bit of burnt, um, um, ultramarine blue, but I think this is going to be okay for me. Yeah, that looks nice. And just as much fog as you want, you know, if you want it to be really misty, you can really go light, very light here. We're just wanting some contrast between this and our foreground grasses, which are darker and more saturated. So these background trees, we wanna keep kind of neutral and desaturated, um, more solid in their values as far as like, um, there's not a lot of color shift or not a lot of value shift. This is the value light and dark. So I'm staying within like this range here instead of doing like a light and a really dark that we're going to do in this foreground. So having the foreground have, you know, a very light area and a very dark area is going to pull it forward. And then having all of this be kind of in this soft general area and um, more desaturated is gonna push that back visually. It's just kind of a trick of color and values that you can do, um, which is obviously in our photo already. So it happens in nature, but we're just, um, making keeping it in mind as we're doing this so that we're making sure that we are mimicking it the right way if that makes sense um if i was paying attention yes it would have okay <laughs> i'm confident <clears throat> So as much, like I said, as much as you want there, but I really like that. It looks kind of like steam mist rising there. Looks pretty good. 
All right, so let's use this brush. I'm not gonna even put it in my water. I'm just gonna wipe it off on my towel. And then I'm going to get my tree color. So whatever color we wanna do for our tree, which is kind of slightly green in our picture. So I'm going to go ahead and get the ultramarine blue and some turquoise. And it's fairly dark. It's not actually as dark as you might think though. It's kind of like in here. Um, so it's not super, super dark. Um, it's still kind of in the distance, so it's still kind of picking up the colors from our sky. So I'm going to grab that rest of that sky color that I had and add that. And it's obviously way blue, so I'm going to get my... Um, I don't even know that I needed the cadmium yellow light. Um, if you wanted to do this whole palette, which is three colors, you could probably just use the magenta and the Indian yellow hue and the turquoise because I've done paintings with those three colors before that turn out really nice. And then maybe, you know, a neutral to um, desaturate when, where needed. But um, those three colors make really nice, um, a, a really nice color scheme. So I think that's pretty close to where I want to be. I'm going to get a little bit more of that sky color again that had that unbleached titanium in it. Um, and if I need to, I can just add a little bit of unbleached titanium. But yeah, that little bit of burnt sienna. So um, these two yellows, turquoise, ultramarine blue, and the burnt sienna is what I've got here. Um, I think that's good, but I think I want it a little bit, maybe a little bit more blue. Okay. All right, so I'm going to create my tree here. Let's go ahead and do our tree trunk so that I know kind of generally where my tree is going to be. That's probably a good idea. Know where tree is. So getting some un burnt umber, burnt sienna, both of my green and my ultramarine blue, a little bit of the magenta. When you add your three um, primaries together here, the yellow and the blue, green and the magenta, you're going to get a neutral gray-brown already. I'm going to add a little bit of the unbleached titanium to it so it's a little bit softened. And I may end up having to glaze back over this if I don't make this color light enough, so I'm trying to keep that in mind. Um, it's pretty close to the edge here. Get When I'm using my liner brush, this is the two um, number two script liner. Um, <clears throat> I want to add lots of water to it. Alright, let's make sure that everything is dry so that I'm not I'm going to lift any color. And I can tell this is kind of sticky. This is probably not fully dry. But it's close enough. Nice. And then, whoop. As we're going up, it's getting thinner. So make sure you don't wait to the very last bit to thin out your branch because then you end up with kind of some weird looking tree limbs, you know, that just end abruptly. So pressing down and then lifting pretty quickly to make sure I'm giving myself plenty of time to taper out that color and or taper out that, those limbs to a thinner and then make sure that like right there it was thin and then thick and then thin again so make sure that they have kind of a uniform thinness uh, thin to get thinner as they go out and not thin thick thin 
if that makes sense. Okay. What? Okay. So I'm going to widen this out here. <clears throat> There's another smaller tree right here. I'm not really worried about the bottom of the tree because we're going to be covering over that area. So just mostly wanting to kind of get a few limbs in here in my tree trunks so that they kind of create that arc that I'm going for. So the tree shape is going to be kind of coming out here. Um, so I want to have branches going out to those areas. All right, that looks pretty good. Good enough. I'm going to do a few crisscrosses just in the middle. Just noticing there's some that are going to cross over. Just throw in some other branches there. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the screen that's now dry on my brush. <laughs> waiting too long. Just get a little tiny bit of water here. I'm going to get some of that dark color from our limbs too. And tap in, oops, fly. Tap in toward the top. Just angling my, the tip of my brush down where I've got the thickest paint so that I'm getting a nice Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. I think the color's pretty close to where I want to be. And the value. Again, I'm more concerned with the value being right than the color because um, if it's too dark or too light, um, it can throw off the whole look of the canvas so just want to make sure that I'm getting that pretty close to where I want to be that looks pretty good I think and I'm getting that dark color from the from the tree limbs there's a happening that come way out and lots of open space in between so making sure that I'm leaving those spots and then this area back here is pretty dark where this tree is and kind of down along the ground too okay pretty close I'm running out of color so I'm gonna have to mix more so let's get those turquoise a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna. Looks good. A little bit of yellow. I'm gonna get a tiny bit of magenta too. And then use this darker color in the middle of what I've just done. So kind of going in and great, creating some darker little areas. When I run out of paint on the tip, I'm kind of turning my brush so that the back end is kind of doing the work, but that looks pretty good. It's definitely too saturated. I'm looking at my reference photo and it's way too green. 
there's a lot more yellow in here a lot more of that burnt sienna color so I need to correct that I'm gonna get some of that color and just use what's left in my brush and put up a little fly <sighs> it's taunting me this time of year we get insects in the studio it drives me crazy okay <laughs> So, getting more of that Indian yellow hue with burnt sienna mixed in with this. And I'm going to go right over the top of my green here, tone it down. That's going to help a ton, a ton. Yeah, much better. Much, much better. I'm getting a little glaze because I'm not wanting to necessarily add more solid. I just want to tone what's there. So kind of just tapping over what's already there and trying not to add too much. So I already kind of liked the look of it. I need the reference photo next to it, honey. Thanks. Um, okay, so still a little bit, still a little bit um, green. I'm going to add this down here, and I'm going to get my magenta and yellow oxide, or not yellow oxide, Indian yellow hue, and a little bit of white. which was kind of close to my sky color, right? That kind of magenta and unbleached titanium. So I'm going to add that sky color into this, wipe out a lot of that, and I'm going to go over some of this and add kind of that smoky... sky and this is obviously not the same color as the sky it's darker because it's got the green and stuff in it but just helping to kind of soften everything up okay that's starting starting to get there now starting to look a little bit better green with it. So I'm making a like a light light yellow green. Get some of my white. And there's just a few little areas right along the bottom. green tone a little bit in my tree okay I think that'll work all right so I'm just going to use this dark color what I've got here down here use it up while I've got it here on my brush add my dark down to the bottom of my canvas. I'm kind of pulling in a downward motion so that it looks like grass, kind of. Okay, and then up here along that ridge, I'm going to wipe this out. And I'm going to 
I'm going to glaze um, some of my mist over this area, but I don't I don't have to wait for it to do this part. It'll it won't hurt anything. So I'm going to get my maybe a little bit of that pyrrol orange, my Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light, and I want to make this kind of yellowish yellowish color here and I'm going to go right along that edge there and establish my foreground line. Look at that, that's nice. Okay. Um, going to add a little bit of the green to it to kind of tone it maybe. I'm going to get a little bit of magenta. You can leave a little bit of that yellow showing through too if you want. It'll shine through and don't cover that all up. Okay. So this color is kind of like yellow oxide, you know, tone-ish, maybe a little bit more saturated, but maybe add a little bit of burnt sienna to tone it down slightly. But that's kind of what I'm going for is sort of a burnt sienna color and I'm going to add a little bit of the unbleached titanium just because it's a little bit dark I think although I do want it darker than my distance I'll pull it forward slightly that's looking good alright more magenta here I think I can do most of this brush, most of this painting with this brush. <laughs> it's doing a lot of the work for us. I'm definitely going to come up a little higher because I think I want to be kind of right there. Um, so I'm going to keep kind of slowly moving my way up. So I may end up kind of covering up some more of that tree than I intended, but I think I want to be up there with it. Kind of adding all these warm colors together to get this color. Just a little bit higher. A little bit of white. Yep, that's looking good. Okay, I think we're getting close. This area is still kind of turning green every time I touch it because that green is still not quite dry, but we're getting there. Okay, getting some of that pyrrole, a little bit of magenta, and let's figure out where I want to put my fence. So they're going to be kind of here and here, I think, kind of right on the third-ish. This one's like on the third, and this one is or sort of in between the third, which would be right here. So, kind of right in here is where I want to put my fence posts. over a little bit. There. 
hair there. This one is. So that brighter color is right where those two meet and coming down here. And there's a little bit of it on this side. This, this is the magenta with the pyrrole orange. dirty might as well clean that out talk about Patreon. Um, yeah, I'll show you. This is our, what? Dog stretched out over there. Oh, the Mark's floor. taking it. I'm going to dry it off. Um, our Patreon, we do traceables, we do a bonus video, and we do a challenge video every month. So the bonus video is for a $5 level. Um, we do it once a month, and this month we're going to be doing a seascape with some flowers. Um, the challenge video, which is this one, um, is going to be Animals of North America. I did three others so far in the series. Um, so we're working through the continents. So this one was South America, um, Asia, and Africa. Um, and so this one will have a bear, bison, wolf, um, some fun uh, cougars and different things. Um, so we work on that on Thursdays all month long. And if you're interested... You can check out patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yeah, there you go. Um, that group also, in addition to the Thursday um, video that they get, um, they also, um, and the Thursday videos generally run about an hour to two hours long, depending, um, and we work on that challenge video all the way until the end. So sometimes it takes me, you know, a couple weeks, you know, the four weeks or so generally they're three to four week um, lessons generally around eight to ten hours or so sometimes they go longer depending on how complex the image is that we're painting so but they also get a Facebook group where they get individualized critiques and um, get to do polls to pick the challenge videos and um, help me decide what to paint. This one was number one on my recent poll, so I agree. I loved it, and I'm glad that they liked it. They never seem to steer me wrong. They usually, the, usually the paintings they like do well on YouTube, so I always listen to them. <laughs> on Fitzy is all laid out. He got a haircut, so he looks a little funny. He got his summer cut, and he's looking a little bit like a Seuss... <laughs> Dr. Seuss animal. He's got leg warmers. Yeah, he does have leg warmers. He's cute. All right, so burnt umber and ultramarine blue, which makes gray, plus some 
I, I had black on my palette at first, but then I'm like, I don't really need it. There's no dark, dark, and we can make our own neutrals. So just decided to go ahead and make my own here. So this is our fence post color. And I'm going to go ahead and set down. I've switched to a two flat. Um, just a squared off edge just makes it easier to do this straight line here. And I love that it was kind of angled in. And then at the bottom, I'm going to kind of pull down so that it blends out into my green or my not green in the picture is it <laughs> it'll be green a few hours later once the sun comes up all the way but and this one is a little bit more straight but don't worry about it being really clean because these were sort of wobbly you know post post fence so they have character I like it yeah looks good yeah I'm like oh there's a crooked but then you look at the photo and they're super crooked so that looks great okay and then I think the cows have been rubbing up against them. about halfway up yeah probably and it goes down into the grass here the cross piece all right, then I'm just going to use the same to do my um, the iron post, and these are a little bit more vertical, and they're going upward. So the the line is kind of like that because this one this one's closer to me, and these ones are farther away. So it's down, kind of down from this a little bit. And then I'll do this one. That's my tallest one. And again, kind of slightly like that. So kind of up here and down into the grass. And this one is pretty close to this, kind of leaning out a little bit in this direction. And it is kind of a little taller than this, so I need to go up a little higher. And also kind of keep it clean, because this is a steel post and not wood. Let's try that again. If you're having trouble keeping a straight line, which I was, uh, it just means I need a little bit more water in my brush. My paint was a little thick, and when it's thick like that, it just doesn't want to come off really easily off my brush. And I've got a pretty soft brush, so it's not able to push it off. There we go. See, now just a little bit more water comes off really nice and cleanly. And then this one is kind of in between these two, but closer to this one. So somewhere in here. And a little bit higher again. All right, that looks good. Good. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this brush, I think, and I'm going to get some glaze. So I've got kind of transparent color, so can't go on too heavy. And I'm going to put my razor wire. And it's going to go across, and I'm just going to tap to do that. It might go a little bit lighter even. Do my first one all the way across. Try to kind of end at the same place on all the poles, if that makes sense. So 
And then if you get into an area like this where you need it to be a little bit more heavy, actually I need to probably glaze this area back before I do this because I don't want to go over the top of my wire. So I'm going to get my yellow glaze, that zinc white and Indian yellow hue, which was my glaze for back here. And I'm going to glaze over my tree a little bit. Again, where I where I'm kind of doing a little bit a little bit closer and you want that to show up against that I want to go a little bit heavier with it and I mean I don't know if this is the best way of doing it because there's like little barbs on here that are not quite showing up so we want to go back in and you can tap in some little individual barbs let me see if it looks better with this brush we'll try it with this and see so there's four lines here that's way too dark. Just add more water or more glaze, either one. Yeah, that might be a little bit better. It's a little softer, a little more subtle now that I've done the other one. <laughs> too late. A lot of the bottom of this is going to be covered with grasses, so I'm not really too worried about that showing up. I'm just going to go ahead and do the best. That looks good. Okay. So, yeah, use the thinner brush. It's just a little bit more subtle looking line. That first line is a little thick. But the transparent color helps it from looking too harsh. That's, I think, the key is having a really soft color. And then here I'm going to go a little heavier with it. Just because it's over this area and it's closer to us. We're getting a little bit more detail. Uh, which liner is that? This is that two liner that I used for the tree. I don't know why that one turned out cur curved. <clears throat> Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Nice. All right, let me get a little bit of the thicker paint here, and I'm just going to go along and tap, tap, tap some little barbs. If you've ever been stuck by one of these, they are not fun. <laughs> As a kid, we used to... There was a area where we'd go through this fence and we'd get caught. <laughs> Every now and then it hurt. <laughs> He's doing his job, huh? Yeah, exactly. 
It works on kids as well as cows. <laughs> I was the tomboy of tomboys, that's for sure. If you could catch it, climb it. <laughs> Ride it. I was doing it. <laughs> Definitely not as active as I used to be. <laughs> you will not catch me trying to go through barbed wire fence now. <laughs> and if you see her doing it, you better run. <laughs> because something is chasing her. <laughs> True, true that. <laughs> and chances are you will be faster than me, so. <laughs> These are evenly spaced. Obviously, I'm not being too particular about it. I honestly don't want to be super fussy about this part because I want it to look kind of rustic, so I'm just kind of... Just doing little zigzaggy, tappy motions here to get the approximation of barbed wire. Nothing too fuzzy. Okay, that looks good. There's some areas where it's a little thicker than others where it's been tied off. There's something going on with this one. I don't really know, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let me go back to this brush that's been sitting in my water. And get some white and some of my ultramarine blue. And I'm going to mix that with this color, which was my fence post color. I'm going to add a little bit of this on my fence post, the back side of it. I'm going to add a little shadowing. Looks good. Okay. Just a little. All right. Now, the fun part. Let's do this shadow in my grasses here. I think I'll go ahead and switch to this brush here. This is the Willow's Blender. And figure out where I want to put my light. So, um, really interesting um, fact is that the light will go in a straight line so in my photo it's more like that because my sunlight was a little farther over because but because of the placement of the sun here it's going to be coming down at us a little bit more directly which I kind of wish I thought about because then I would have put my fence farther over but I just thought of it so too late now if you want your shadow to be more dramatic here which I kind of wanted but it's, I can't do now because it wouldn't look right. Um, then put either put your sun over or put your fence over somewhere so that your line does look more like this than it does for me. So I'm going to line up kind of generally. I mean, I can still get a pretty decent line there, but it's going to be kind of like this. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of mark that line there. And then that line is going to be kind of generally right here, this way. All right? Okay. And I need more glaze. My tree back here is too far away for it to affect us. We're not going to see any of that shadowing there. But I'm going to go ahead and use what's on my brush here, which is the magenta and burnt, um, magenta and ultramarine blue. No. Turquoise and ultramarine blue. My goodness. And burnt sienna. I'm going to add burnt sienna to it. So I want it to be kind of on the turquoisey side, though. And so I'm going to. Go like this, just 
trying to get off that thick color that I just did, but too late. You might want to go a little bit softer with that when you do it because I put it on a little bit thick. All right, and then I'm going to use that color in my grass down here. Remember, I want to have really good, like, dark and light. So this should be pretty dark, pretty darn dark down here. Maybe not all the way dark, but pretty close. All right, so we can also, if we want to get fancy about it, we can also kind of do a little bit of maybe these posts are getting a little bit of shadow, too. So these would be the tall the tall grass is kind of obscuring the shadows and these they're not thick enough to you know affect it too much but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of darken up kind of that general area though you know so that it kind of looks like maybe we started to have a shadow there how you doing hun what are you doing? Nothing. Checking chat. Oh. What's chat talking about tonight? They were talking about dinner before. They were mocking me. Yeah, the first, <laughs> no. the first chat of the night was about food. No. Which set the tone, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a discussion about barbed wire. Oh, okay. It's, it's, yeah. Tetanus shots. Yeah, I was thinking that too when I was talking about that. I was like, man, it's it's a wonder I didn't get tetanus as a kid. I'm sure that I was immune, you know, had the You probably need to it by now. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure I had the shots. Built up tolerances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much. Bring it. <laughs> you gave the fence tetanus. <laughs> You're like Chuck Norris. Yeah. All right. So there we go. I'm getting really close here. I'm going to let that dry really well. We'll do our little birds that are on here. And I added these. They were not in my picture. Yeah. I didn't quite catch it. There was a bird, but it was farther down and you couldn't really see it very well. So. Uh, and I. Okay, I still have a little bit of that fence post color for my birds. But I'm going to get a little bit more. Okay. All right, so they're just sitting here chatting. Mm -hmm. Having a little morning chat I think we've been babying these little worms caterpillars that um, come every year that they're, they're swallowtail butterfly and we had three of them show up this year and we were so excited they were on our dill plants and we think the mockingbird got them yesterday <laughs> well at least one of them so we had three then one disappeared. One disappeared. Have no idea where it went to. <clears throat> then there were two. Right. And, and now then, there's one. Then I moved the dill because I found one trying to find more food. And he was not with the dill. And so I put him on my parsley plant. And then the other one that was still left on the plants... I moved 
and to where we're growing more dill. To where, yeah, yeah, where there was more dill, and I thought, you know, if he if he moves to find more food, he'll find the dill. But he found a bird instead, I think. Well, yeah. <laughs> we don't know what happened to him, but he's maybe he he's MIA. So yeah, yeah. But we might we might still have one butterfly, and I'm getting ready. As soon as he cocoons, I'm gonna bring him inside. So I'm just kind of waiting. We've we've done that before. Years ago, we used to get them when we had um, parsley, and they're called parsley worms out here. They're but they're beautiful, big caterpillars, bright, bright and colorful, and they turn into the most beautiful swallowtail butterflies. So I was, we did. Uh, that was Spencer for several years while well, he was young. Every year we would, we did it probably, I want to say three or four years in a row. And then we stopped growing our garden for a little while because it got overrun before Mark made the raised beds for us. <laughs> and started our whole garden obsession again. All right, that is looking awfully good, if I don't say so myself. I'm really excited about this. All right, um, so then the last thing is just to kind of figure out what how we want to do the rest of our grasses. So um, I could, this is where I'm thinking the fan might come in to play. So let's grab it. I'm going to clear off some space again on my palette. If you have one of these glass palettes and when you spray it with water, it helps lift the paint a little easier. So make sure you spray it before you scrape it. It just helps, gets that kind of pocket of moisture underneath the color and lifts off much easier than trying to scrape it off dry. All right, that looks good. that around. I love these. These are shop towels. They're also in my Amazon shop. I buy them by the case. They are great because they last forever. You can, uh, they're way, way sturdier than, than regular paper towels. All right. <clears throat> getting some water there getting my Indian yellow hue what's left of it a little bit of the pyrrole orange cadmium yellow light so those three and then I want a little bit of burnt sienna just to kind of tone it so it's not too saturated so that looks good nice kind of Dark orangey color. I'm gonna get some more yellow and some white. Oh, that's nice. That's gonna be really good right there. All right, add water to it though. The fan brush needs water, just like a liner brush. When you've got this thin line of, you know, thin line of bristles like this, uh, it can't push the paint around as easily. If there's nothing behind it to, you know, help give it stability. Um, these, this one that I'm using is a bristle fan, so it's got a little bit more than, like, the thinner, um, more, uh, I don't know what the, it's just fan. The, so bristle fan is different than regular fan because it's got the, it's kind of made out of the hog bristle brush fibers that are a little bit heavier. But it still needs, you know, it's only can do so much. It still needs to have a fluid paint so that it can push, push easily. Okay, so I'm going to start with my yellow here. And make sure I'm going up over my dark bits. I'm going to get a little bit of the <coughs> other colors here. 
So before you get to the shadowy areas, mm-hmm. the cross part has no shadow. Is that on purpose? It's not in the picture. Um, I think the grass is taller. Yeah, in the, the grass picture. is taller than it. Yeah, that than it. So, one of the parts of it. So okay. I I might put a little bit of one, but yeah, I'm not seeing it in the picture. So. And the shadow doesn't start right underneath the. Like it's it's I've moved over a little bit too, so I'm gonna go over my shadow and then I'll put it back in. But <coughs> I just wanted it there to kind of for reference, to get my turquoise and blue, and use that kind of mixing in to make my greens with what's on my brush here. There might be a little bit right here. I don't know. Well, it would be like, yeah, it would be like this direction and I'm definitely not seeing it, so... Yeah, I think the grass is, like, heaped up and tall right in front of those parts. And right. so, like you said, the shadow doesn't <coughs> run right up to the post right. in the picture. So, to avoid getting too much of this kind of straight line, I'm going to kind of try to crisscross over um, my areas there. So <coughs> let me do it on paper here. Maybe we can do a little mini, mini lesson on grasses. That'd be good. So our last one was kind of hard and soft lines. So this can be grasses with a fan brush or we'll um, I'll show two different ways I cannot draw a straight line to save my life look at that wow okay so using the fan brush you're gonna set your brush down, and I'm gonna co kind of show two different um, things, like the field. So I'm gonna start in my distance, right, and kind of do a straight line across. Then I'm gonna come down and crisscross over it. And as I'm doing it, I'm trying to create um, this effect. Um, so I'm trying to go over it in a way that is not creating a pattern. That's the key. You don't want to go straight across and then straight across because you see how obvious that is, right? It looks like a line. So this is what we're going for, and I'm just going to cross out this. No. So we're going for a more natural look. So to get that, I'm going to go up and down. Instead of going straight across, as I'm putting my color on, I'm going to go up and down. Some are going to be taller than others and go in different directions. So not the same direction. So these are all boom, boom, boom lined up, right? And boom, boom, boom lined up this way too. So this way I'm going to go in different directions and as I get closer to the bottom, I'm going to get larger and larger with my brush strokes. And I might go a little bit darker so that they can show up against the background colors too and get a little bit more contrast. But, okay, that's too thick. That was too thick. So it was kind of clumping together instead of giving me individual lines. 
But so once I get that kind of background in there, then I can go in front of it. I didn't leave myself a lot of room, but you get the idea. So smaller and closer together. I'm going to go ahead and do a grass clump so you get an idea of how to do that. So that's how your grass is going to grow in these little clumps that sort of fan out. And so if you put these together enough and overlap them, that's how you get kind of natural looking grasses. Areas in between that are, you know, open and space them out so that they're crossing over each other and creating a natural look at versus this where we're going. And then you can also do the same thing with a liner brush. Um, it just takes, takes longer, you know, cause you're doing individual little brush strokes, um, to do this. But I find that the, if I'm doing like, um, the very last few grasses over the top, that's what I'll, when I'll pull out my brush, because then I can get some individual hairs or individual grasses versus this one that I can't get that, you know, obviously it's going to do, you know, 12 instead of one. And, um, when I want it to be a little bit more tight, you know, a little bit more focused, um, then I can pull out that individual brush and get those. So these ones that are kind of farther back, close to the fence post, I'm keeping them fairly small. And then the ones in the foreground will do a little bit taller and bigger. And we've got a nice dark background here so that this is showing up really nicely against it. So remember, I'm constantly moving my brush up and down. The tendency is to want to create a pattern. Your eye will, and your, um, huh? Your your brain will will automatically look to create a pattern. That's just kind of how we're made. So you have to kind of deliberately train yourself to fight against that urge to make make must make pattern <laughs> you know it's like don't do it even when you're trying not to and I'll like be I'll just be chucking along and talking and painting and then you know stop and realize I've made a pattern you know so if I'm like like not like really thinking about it I will make a pattern um every time you know, put three things in a row and, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just whatever I'm painting, flowers, anything. Um, I'm going to make a pattern if I don't deliberately make an effort not to. <laughs> so just keep that in mind as you're doing your grasses and whatever, just to kind of keep an eye out for your pattern making tendencies. I'm going to go back in here and add a little bit of the darker back in, a little bit more of this turquoise back in, kind of in my shadowy area here, kind of glazing that back. That's nice. Yeah, I kind of want this area to be a little bit more turquoise-like, so I'm kind of, that's why I noticed it was getting a little, a little brown. I wanted to add a little bit more saturated color there. And I need a little bit darker color too. But this brush is doing a pretty good job on my grasses. And I can use the edge of it too to kind of do more uh, 
vertical grassy things. So I might in some of these areas kind of do that. I think I'm getting to the point there where I need to get my individual brush though because it's not wanting to, you know, like you can see there, it didn't really do what I was wanting it to do in that area. between the fence posts there, there's more of the lighter yellows happening. Really, this is just a personal preference, so you can stop at any time when you're happy with your grasses. Um, I definitely want more reds in here. I like more of that pink color. So... I'm gonna switch to the liner brush here. Get my magenta and pyrrole orange. I mix a little bit of this color that I was using before, so it's not like a brand new color. And we'll just add Do you think I want maybe get this stippler try? The stipple kind of because there's these little like grasses that have the seed heads that are turning yellow orange in the light. Magenta in the light. This is just a little softer looking. Okay. Oh, what time is it? Oh, we're making good time. Okay, good. All right, getting some of the white. I'm going to mix that with this pink. Just tap in. Now, when you get to these colors that are the really saturated and more like high value um, or high, yeah, lighter toned. I want to be very careful where I'm putting these because I don't want to overwhelm my painting because they're going to really draw attention to themselves. So they're kind of the salt on the dish we're creating. So we don't want to overwhelm it by putting too much on, making it too salty. <laughs> it's a little spice. Trying to kind of, just by working that negative space, leaving that darker around 
this color to create that line of my my shadow making sure that all of these have a good color in front of them all of the fence posts are well integrated okay that's starting to get there we can, can make grasses ish with this too just pulling it up they're not going to be as as good but can get get some I'm going to get some of that turquoisey color here and put that back in and maybe kind of go in the shadowy area with it give our shadows some more detail a little bit more of that turquoisey ultramarine blue mixture Yeah, that blue really helps a lot. That looks really nice. I think that's a nice counterpoint to all these reds and things that we've got going on. It's getting very close. And then there's just a few little areas where I'm gonna go back to this one round that I used for the, my birds, which by the way needed a second coat, I think. for them just making a dark color by mixing all my darks <laughs> close enough they kept getting a little bit darker and go ahead and do kind of some dark on my posts sure I've got just a few little areas in my foreground that are that dark that have that darker value too so I'm gonna grab some of that color and just pop it in just a couple places here that was just like magenta and ultramarine blue and turquoise and burnt umber so just kind of all my dark colors so just a few places I don't want it everywhere I want it to be kind of dark or kind of um, blue, blue green in this general area here. But let's go ahead and use this little brush here, and I'm going to get my yellow and some white, and a little bit of the pyrrole orange, I think. And I'm going to do my little flowers that are right in here. So there's some little flowers that are getting lit up by the sun. Right through there. Let's go ahead and do some here even though they're not in the picture. Why not? Just dots, that's all it is. Just little dots. You tell them, Fitzy. Do you hear that puppers barking? Can you go check out? 
Got to go to work. Got to go to work. Yeah. Been sleeping on the job. There's happenings in the neighborhood. It's like a fireman. Call comes in. Yep. Dogs barking. Okay. Got to scramble. He woke up going, <laughs> okay. I'm on it. Go look at the front window. Yeah. Make sure there's no kids riding their bikes down the street or anything. Mm -hmm. No hooligans. Yeah. Yeah, he's a grumpy old man. He's like that movie we watched the other night, Otto. <laughs> man, he loved Otto. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> that was a good movie. Yeah, it was. Tom I, mean, I, don't Hanks. Want, I don't want to give it away, but there wasn't any explosions. <laughs> or tanks. Yeah, true. True. Sorry, honey. Just a man and a cat. <laughs> All right, just dotting in some. I don't even know what colors I use. I think this is magenta and burnt sienna. And again, kind of stop whenever you're happy with it. So you just. You know, put as much or little detail as you want. I'm seeing some areas that have kind of some, maybe some of the lighter pink and orange together. Make a salmon, salmon color and do some little vertical dots. I'm trying not to make a pattern here, so. Keep an eye on that because he will easily make a pattern right there. A bit more yellow, white. Didn't use as much white as I thought I would. This can be really effective over your dark areas. So if you want, you know, to really like, you know, make a grass stand out or, you know, have some sort of a, a little moment, you can make sure you're doing this over a darker area and that'll really make it much more dramatic. So if I kind of go on either side of my shadow line here, I can, or just over it, you know, in some places, I can really make these little dots have much more impact. I love this. I think this is really fun. I hope you guys like it too. This is really calming. We need that, right? We need some calm. <laughs> Peaceful. I'm just doing some lighter, more obvious value shifts here. There's some grasses coming over here that are a little bit lighter. Just kind of looking in my picture to see where I'm seeing the brightest grasses and kind of just top tapping in some little small brush strokes I just this is getting better and better but I'm trying to also not overdo so I tend to do that when it comes to flowers so I'm trying to think about where to stop okay I think we may be close to being done here I see some areas like right in here that is a little bit obvious. So I'm going to get some like lighter green and just kind of tap over some lighter green. Make sure I've got fluid. If it's not coming off your brush, just add water. 
That's what was happening there. It just wasn't coming off because I my paint was too thick. Okay, so that's just this is where I was saying, you know, save this for the last little bit, and then we've got, you know, all this really yummy grassy texture, but no detail. So now I can go back in and add just a few tiny little grasses with some detail and it's gonna make all the rest of it look more detailed than it actually is just because we're kind of going in here and doing just a few little very detailed tiny little grasses in my foreground and making sure that I'm going in all different directions with these and just different up and down side to side they're just barely catching the light all right I think we're done I love it. Hope you guys like it too. I think this one is uh, one of my favorites we've done in a while. Now, one thing I would do once this is completely dry, which it's not quite there, um, is get my magenta. Maybe a little bit of pyrrole orange too, just like a bright reddish magenta color. very transparent so use a transparent color if you don't have magenta pick another color that's transparent because I'm not wanting to cover anything I just want to tint this whole area here with just a little bit more of a warm reddish glow like in my picture there was actually kind of some sunspots here caused by the sun you know, hitting my camera lens or whatever. But right here, there's a flare. That's the word I'm looking for. So, just gonna add a little bit of flare here. All right, that's it. We're done. Thank you guys so much for watching with us today. Let's hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed bringing this to you. This was really fun. I'm going to sign it. This is my acrylic paint pen. They come in all kinds of different brands. Kinds. I have several different kinds. This one's a PBO. I like the Posca as well. Uh, any of those. I like the PBO because they come in um, like really neutral colors. You know, so I have my browns and that one is the beige. What color is that? Be yeah, beige. All right. We have a question coming in. Okay. Good. For some reason, I'm not seeing it, so I'm trying to see if we get it back up again. Just, just ask it. Doesn't matter if it's on the screen or not. I don't. You don't have it. Okay. Good find me. All right. So, what size Princeton Aspen fan brush did you use? Ah, uh, I think that's the number two, if I'm not mistaken. Short fan two, number two. Short fan number two. Yes. And I, and I just posted a link in the chat to the video where you showed how to mix quinacridone burnt orange. There was a request about that also uh, in the yes. chat. So yes. <clears throat> we did a video a couple months ago. And yeah, it's on TikTok and Instagram, I think, both uh, reels. And I think there might be one on YouTube, too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I also painted, I put a link to the long form video that it was in, and it should take okay. you right to the yeah. timestamp. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And um, it basically is just, I found that burnt sienna and magenta are the easiest 
two to mix, ones that I generally have in my yeah, toolkit. Give it away. Huh? Give it away. No. <laughs> what? No, I gave you time to see something else to continue painting. <laughs> you were so close to the door and I pulled you back. I know. I'm just going to go a little bit darker right there, just the very bottom there. I'm using kind of that magenta. And zinc white is a, is a cold and heavy body? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can buy that through the links down below? Wherever, yeah. Yeah, it has it everywhere. All right. Store, Blick. Blick, uh-huh. The, the links, if you use my links to Blick, um, it'll take you to a list that has my recommended, you know, uh, supplies. And it, it may be in there. I'm not sure. I think it might be. But if it's not, you can click on one of the... Um, one of the paint colors and it'll take you to the golden um, paint section and then you can find it from there so all right thank you guys so much we appreciate you as always watching with us hanging out being patrons sharing like subscribe if you haven't already but uh, figure if you're still around you <laughs> hopefully like us you're either crazy <laughs> or just gonna leave a mean comment for no reason <laughs> Getting more ammunition. <laughs> no, we're we've got uh, amazing, amazing fans. They're so great to us. We uh, we appreciate you. You guys make us feel very loved and appreciated. So hopefully you enjoy this tutorial, and we'll be back with another one next week. I cannot remember what I'm painting next week. Let me, let me look. No, that that would have been... Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but he talked about this. Blueberries and butterflies. Ooh, yay. That's another one, that, a photo that I took. Yeah, um, you know, has all the June schedule on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you want to sign up for that, if you want to get our emails, um, you can sign up at thankfulart.com. Uh, our new website is not quite ready yet, but it will be soon. I keep saying that, but um, we'll just keep Thank hoping for that. To all the patrons that helped. Yes, we With had. The links and yeah, checking I've, everything. I've got a list of those ladies, so I don't want to miss anybody by saying it on off, mm -hmm. offhand. I'll have to make a full list of all the ladies that helped me, and we'll do a shout-out to them once the website goes live because they helped tag and test and checked all the links and there was 725 videos to do so there was a lot of a lot of tags and <laughs> testing and things and so we still have a few kinks to work out but once that gets all ready we will be up with our new website i'm super excited about it so all right thank you guys so much we'll see you next time thanks for watching bye